Hello, I'm Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you are a regular viewer. Today I'm going to walk you through how to group and how to weld in Silhouette Studio. These are functions you will likely use a lot, but they can get a little confusing. So I'm going to use the examples you see here to show how, why, and when to use each of the tools and what the difference is between them. But first, let me get a little business out of the way. I would really, really appreciate it if at the end of the video, you feel like you got something out of it, if you would hit the like button, thumbs up, and better yet, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I regularly release videos on Cricut, Silhouette, and Scan and Cut software and projects you can make with those machines, as well as the occasional card making tutorial. Also, if you have any questions at the end of the video or suggestions for topics or projects you would like me to cover, I would love to hear about that as well in the comments. All of those things will greatly help my channel, so thank you in advance. <laughs> now let me get started. Okay, so first I want to talk about the group function. Now you can see I've got this design here with a heart and a bunch of different sized circles. And let's say I want to turn this into an iron-on for a t-shirt. Right now it's a little bit small for an adult t-shirt, so I need to resize it. I need to make it, make it bigger. So how do I do that? Well, I can click and drag to select all of the objects there. And then using one of the corner handles, I can pull it to resize it and make it bigger. And that certainly works. But it does mean that when I'm clicking and dragging, I need to make sure that I get all of them. And like, what if I miss one because I'm just not paying attention? And then I click and drag and oh no, you know, I've got these few circles that have not resized proportionately to the rest of them. And so am I going to have to try to figure out what's, how to size those up now on their own? Or I guess I can go over here and hit the undo arrow it's not a, that big a deal to hit the undo arrow to do it and then just reselect and drag again. But really, I would rather have this like all as one group that I can just move around and change all together at one time. I don't want to have to worry about selecting every single circle every time I go over, every time I want to move this. Because, you know, that's just going to take too much time. I don't have a whole lot of time, so I want to make sure that I just get this done right the first time. So the easiest way is to click and select them all and then I can right click and hit group. Or I can click and drag to select them all and go up to the to the toolbar across the top here and select the group icon which is this little guy here and group them. And you'll notice that all the little individual boxes that were around each circle goes away and it all becomes one box. So it's turned into a group, if you will. And then I can just resize this without worrying about it. And then, you, then let's say I wanna, oh, I'm not working on this right now. I'm gonna work on this instead. I can just click and drag it. I can just click it once and it drags the whole thing off. I don't have to worry about making sure I clicked every single circle to keep all of them in the same alignment before I drag it off the mat. So that's kind of the main reason I use group um, to keep a bunch of smaller elements together so I can rearrange them, resize them, or just move them around really. But it's only a temporary grouping. So let's say, for example, I decide I don't like where this one circle is in this arrangement. I want to change it. I can right click on this and ungroup or go up to the ungroup icon, which is right next to the group icon on the toolbar and hit ungroup. And then you'll see it all goes back to each individual element on its own. And so then I can take this and like rearrange it the way I want it. Let's say and then I can go back and click and select them all and then group them up again to move them around. So that is kind of the main thing about grouping. It is, it's like a temporary putting together of groups. Another reason that you might want to use group, and so I'm going to ungroup this, is in like for this t-shirt example, we've got three different colors 
of vinyl that I want to cut these elements out of. Well, as you know, when I send this over to my machine, I can't cut three colors of vinyl like in this order. There's no way to do that. So I have to cut the red circles, then the pink circles, or the pink circles, then the red, you know, I have to cut the red circles together, the pink circles together, and the fuchsia heart together in order to make this design. Well, I suppose I could just rearrange them all, you know, a little pile of circles in pink and a little pile of circles in red and then the heart and cut them out that way. But it's going to be a lot easier and save me time when I'm making my t-shirt in the end if I can leave these all exactly as you see them in this design and cut them out that way. So cut just the pink circles out as you see them now, cut the red circles out as you see them now, and then the heart, obviously. So to do that, you want to group by color. So one way to do that is to click on the pink circle, hold down your shift key, and then click on the next one and keep holding down shift as you click all of the pink circles. And then again, you can right click or go up to the group icon on the toolbar and hit group. And so that groups all of the pink circles together. Let's click off of that. And then we want to do that for the red circles. So another way to do that is to go up to panels over here in the upper left and click select by color. And that's going to bring up this little select by color box. And first it says by line. So that's only showing the red cut lines that we have going now. Or you can click on by fill, which is what we want. And we're going to click on the red. So you can see it shows every fill color we have on this. And we're just going to hit the red. And so that selects all those red circles. Now we can go up and group those and they become their own group. And so now I need to, let's say I'm going to cut my pink circles first. I pull the red circles off. They stay exactly as they were in the design. Pull them over here, pull the heart off. I can send my pink circles over to my machine, cut the pink vinyl out. Then I can drag the pink off and I can, and I can now uh, pull my red circles on send this to my machine and have it cut out the red vinyl and then finally I pull that off and put the fuchsia heart on the mat and cut out the fuchsia vinyl. Now obviously with an iron on you want to flip those or mirror them before you send them to your machine just <laughs> but you know we're not going to do that right now for this purpose and then when I go to layer them um, together on my shirt I can fairly easily fit the layers of vinyl back together into the original design and then much more easily iron them onto the shirt than I would be able to if I had to take each individual circle and figure out where it went in the design. So that's a great reason to use group as well. All right, so I'm going to click and drag on all those and I'm going to group this now back into one large group and pull this off. Now, another reason you might want to use group would be when you need to center multiple objects on top of another object and you want to um, keep them, like say you've got eyes, eyes are a really good example. So I'm gonna go over here and hit some, make some circles, make some small circles and I'm gonna fill them with a color. And I'm gonna duplicate this by right clicking on it and then making another one. And so let's say, Oop. I need to get off my circle making tool there. Okay, so now I want to, let's say I'm turning this into a monster and I want these eyes to be, um, you know, centered to each other on the, on top of the monster head. So I could if I do this now, like if I select, click and select them both, ah, hold down shift and select, and then I hold, click the head or the square in this case, and I go over here to the right side and go to the transform panel, which has the alignment tools, or you can do it up here across the top. These are the alignment tools for that. If I hit like align center horizontally, it's going to just bring the two eyes together into one. And I don't, that's not what I want. Obviously, I want the two eyes to be spaced apart, but then centered on top of that. So a reason to use group would be you're going to click and then shift click to select that. Right click to hit group. 
and now the eyes are their own group. So let's say I want them centered on, so I'm going to click that and then I want them centered on this square head. I can then hit that same horizontal centering and you'll see how it takes the two, keeps them in the same alignment and then centers them onto on the top part of the head. So that's another great reason to use group. All right, so we've talked about group, now let's talk about weld. Weld is a lot more permanent than group. Um, it's basically, well, here's the reason to, here's a good reason and probably the main reason to use weld, although there are others. Here's a word typed out in a script font or a, a cursive font. And you might do this and then want to cut this out as one solid word. Like you want the outside to cut. But if you see the red cut lines here, each letter is still functioning as a separate letter. And it's, so when it goes to cut, your machine is going to cut this red line and then it's going to cut this line. And you're going to even have this little piece in the middle that's going to fall out. And obviously you don't want that. Like that's not, that's not great. And to fit those all together and glue them down, that's kind of a nightmare. So the better solution then is to weld this together. So it is selected. And if we go over here and click the modify panel, you'll see weld up here. So you can just click on that or weld is also up here on the top toolbar right up here. But I'm going to use the modify panel and I'm going to click weld. And you'll see now those lines are gone and this is now the four letters are now transformed into one solid word. So this is going to cut around the outside and not cut out all the individual letters. It's just going to cut as one continuous word and that's what I want. So that's probably the primary reason to use weld is with cursive fonts. Like if you want a word to cut as a connected word, you have to weld it and you have to make sure that the letters are overlapping before you can use weld. The items have to overlap in order to weld them together. All right, now you can also overlap shapes. You can overlap two shapes, or you can overlap like a shape with a word if you want. I mean, that would be funky looking, but whatever you need to do. So in this case, I'm gonna click and select both of them and then weld them together. And you'll see now it creates this one solid shape, kind of a weird shape, but a, a shape nonetheless. And so that is another reason you might wanna use weld. Now you don't want to get weld, say, like your eyes onto your shape because we'll show you what that does. That just absorbs the eyes right into the shape. It's not going to keep the colors separate. It's just welding these things together to create a new solid object. So anything that's overlapping another object can be welded together. But if it's totally overlapping, it's just going to disappear and weld completely into the shape. So I hope I have clarified that. All right, so to sum up, group puts elements of a design together in a, a more temporary way uh, that you can easily undo at any time. You can ungroup any time. It's kind of like, say, paper clipping or stapling elements together. You know, it keeps them, you can always unclip them or unstable them if you need to and move things around. Weld, on the other hand, is much more serious. Like by welding, you were saying to the program, you want these objects permanently put together, not just stapled or clipped, but welded like a welder welds metal. You can think of it that way. It's like welding metal. And that may also be why welding is pretty hard to undo. So can you undo welding? Well, yeah, technically you can. Like I can go up here and I can hit unweld or undo the undo arrow up here and there are no limits on the number of times that I can hit undo technically I think in Silhouette Studio there doesn't appear to be so I can get back here to unweld these two objects so you can undo hit that undo many many times if you need to as long as you haven't saved the design in between when you welded and when you realize you need to unweld 
but you do need to be aware that if you weld something together and then work on a different part of the design, kind of like I just did, only to realize you didn't want to weld the first object, by clicking the undo arrow, you'll have to undo everything you have done since then, one step at a time, until you get back to where you welded the first object. So it's not the ideal situation, but you know, it is a, it is a way to do it if you absolutely have to. But I would say if you're worried about welding two objects together, you're not totally sure you want to do it, you have a couple choices. You can wait until right before you are ready to send the project over. You could like group them together temporarily and then right before you send it, weld them or group them and make a copy. So like I can click this and group it and then I can right click again and duplicate to make a copy. Put that off to the side and then you can take these, ungroup them and then weld them together. Nope, can't weld that way. And then you've got a welded version and an unwelded version in the event that later on you decide, oh, I don't want those things welded. You've got the backup copy over here. And then you can always delete these later if you, when it turns out you were good with the, with the weld. So that is your only way to unweld. And so welding is like welding metal. Grouping is more like clipping or stapling things together temporarily. So this brings me to the end of the little lesson on grouping and welding in Silhouette Studio. And so I hope I've helped clear up any confusion that you may have had over what each tool does and when you want to use it. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you learned anything uh, useful or you just enjoyed the video, <laughs> I would really appreciate if you would give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions uh, about grouping or welding or anything else, or any suggestions for future tutorials or project ideas that you'd like me to cover, please let me know by leaving me a comment. I want to give you the help you need, so it is great if you can tell me what that is. As I mentioned in the beginning, I regularly post tutorial on Cricut, tutorials on Cricut, Silhouette, and Brother Scan and Cut software, and projects you can make with those machines, as well as the occasional card making tutorial. So I would really love it if you would subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are posted. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day and I hope that the rest of your day is amazing. Thanks.